Every year, over 4 million tons of explosives are detonated worldwide. From C-4 charges capable of destroying armored vehicles to grenades and guided missiles that level entire bunkers, these materials don't just destroy, they obliterate everything they touch. But have you ever wondered how they're actually made? How can a simple grayish powder transform into a force capable of bringing down buildings in a matter of seconds? Today, we'll travel to Australia, home to the largest explosive manufacturing plant on the planet, where over 500 kilograms are produced every hour, ready to be shipped to hundreds of high-risk facilities and military arsenals. So, get ready, because today we're going to discover how one of the world's most dangerous materials is mass-produced. Let's begin. Step 1. Extracting the explosive ingredients It all starts in gigantic open-pit mines, where hydraulic excavators weighing over 100 tons work tirelessly, searching for the key ingredients to manufacture one of the planet's most dangerous compounds, gunpowder. In South America and other mineral-rich regions, thousands of tons of saltpeter are extracted. This natural nitrate possesses explosive properties. Although seemingly harmless, when correctly combined, it can unleash a devastating reaction. Hundreds of kilometers away, other machines drill into the ground in search of sulfur, that highly flammable yellowish material which, upon contact with heat, can ignite spontaneously. And in the northern deserts, giant trucks haul over 200 tons of ammonium nitrate per trip. This substance is so unstable that, with the right detonator, it can wipe out an entire city. Each of these ingredients individually appears harmless, but together they can reduce a mountain to dust in seconds. Once extracted, armored trucks and reinforced trains transport them to industrial ports, where enormous cargo ships will carry them to Australia, where the true transformation into one of the most destructive materials created by humans will begin. Step 2. Receiving and Preparing Compounds Once extracted from the mines, the explosive ingredients arrive at the factory under strict security measures. The saltpeter, sulfur, and ammonium nitrate are unloaded in isolated areas, where specialized teams inspect each batch before allowing it into the system. After inspection, each undergoes its own purification stage. Saltpeter is crystallized in special tanks to remove impurities, sulfur is melted in industrial furnaces and slowly cooled until completely stable and ammonium nitrate is crushed and granulated to prevent compaction. Just a few kilograms handled incorrectly can cause a devastating explosion. With all three ingredients ready comes the most delicate moment of this phase, mixing them. Enormous industrial turbines fuse them in precise proportions, following an exact recipe that transforms these three common powders into a compound with immense destructive capability. While the materials slowly spin within the mixers, the factory enters maximum alert mode, because here, all those powders being mixed could explode with any minimal failure. The process is so dangerous that it's carried out in armored facilities, with automated machinery, while operators supervise from reinforced remote rooms. Once everything is perfectly mixed, the explosive compound is ready to move on to the next step of its transformation. Step 3. Molding and Final Shaping With the explosive mixture ready, one of the most critical phases of the process begins, shaping it. The material is transported through sealed conduits to a high-security area, where enormous hydraulic presses apply tons of pressure to compact it into blocks, cylinders, or pellets, depending on its final use. Dynamite, military explosives, detonators, or mining charges. Every mold must be perfect. A single gram too much or an air bubble could create an unstable and extremely dangerous explosive. The entire process is controlled by pressure, temperature, and vibration sensors, while operators supervise from armored rooms, ready to stop everything in case of any error. In parallel, part of the mixture is combined with special chemical binders to manufacture plastic explosives, like the famous C4. This moldable material, like clay, can adhere to any surface and possesses enough force to destroy an armored vehicle in seconds. And with each charge now formed and stabilized, it's time to encapsulate them and give them the characteristic appearance of each type of bomb. Step 4. Encapsulation and Stabilization Once the explosives are formed, they move one by one into the encapsulation area, where specialized machinery places them into their final outer container. This casing isn't just designed to prevent accidental detonations during transport or handling. It also gives them their final appearance, whether as grenades, cartridges, capsules, or shaped charges. Depending on the type of charge, each unit is placed into its specific container, 
pressed cardboard tubes for industrial explosives, plastic cylinders for charges like TNT, and reinforced metal capsules for military projectiles or missiles. The classic hand grenades are also formed here, where automated machines precisely insert the exact amount of gunpowder and metal fragments into each spherical casing. Every casing is designed to contain the energy and protect the charge from any impact or vibration. In the case of plastic explosives like C4, they are sealed in compact sheets, protected with anti-static films and thermal wraps. Literally, as you see it in video games like Call of Duty, just the charge, plastic layers, and a ready-to-explode package. Once encapsulated, each unit moves to the labeling and coating area, where it's classified and stored in special reinforced chambers under controlled conditions. And now, with each charge protected and ready, it's time to integrate the detonation system that will transform all that material into a real explosion. Step 5. Detonation System Integration. Each explosive charge, now encapsulated and stabilized, is prepared to receive its most important component, the detonator. This small device, with just a spark or electrical impulse, can unleash all the power contained within. There are different types depending on the use. Some have impact-activated primer caps, others use electrical wires, programmable timers, or even remote detonators activated from kilometers away. There are also the classic ring mechanisms in hand grenades, which release the explosion seconds after being thrown. Technicians, equipped with special suits and working under strict security protocols, assemble each system with surgical precision. In the most delicate cases, the process is performed with robotic arms, controlled remotely to minimize any human risk. Once the detonator is in place, the unit undergoes a final inspection. Every millimeter is checked to ensure the system is completely safe to transport transport but lethally effective when it's time to activate it. If everything is correct, the charge is ready to face one of the most decisive and delicate steps of the entire process. Step 6. Power and Sensitivity Tests Before any explosive leaves the plant, it must face its most demanding test. Random batches are selected and transported to remote test fields where specialized operators detonate samples of each type of bomb manufactured. Here, it's not enough for it to just explode. Everything is measured to the millimeter, the force of the blast wave, the detonation speed, the stability against impacts, vibrations, and even its fire resistance. Some charges are heated to a red glow to check if they can withstand extreme temperatures without accidentally activating. Others are dropped from drones in free fall, shaken on platforms that simulate earthquakes, or fired at armored steel plates to measure their true power. If a single charge fails here, it could cost a military mission or cause a tragedy. Therefore, every batch that shows the slightest flaw is completely discarded and destroyed without exception. Only explosives that pass every test with surgical precision receive the seal of approval and move on to the final step of the entire process. Step 7. Packaging and Distribution With every explosive approved and certified, it's time to pack and distribute them to the real world. Each unit is carefully placed in reinforced containers, designed to resist impacts, humidity, heat, and even fires. Small cartridges are sealed in individual capsules, while industrial charges, like dynamite sticks, are packed in armored boxes with risk signage visible from all angles. For military grenades, each unit is placed in individual fire-retardant foam supports and sealed in hermetic metal boxes with a double security lock, designed to withstand temperatures up to 300 degrees. The most sensitive explosives, like C4, are packaged in isolated compartments with double thermal layers, anti-static protection, and hermetic sealing. Not even a spark can escape here. Every hour, a single factory can package over a thousand explosives ready for operation. Everything is grouped by type, power, and destination, and each batch receives a unique tracking code. Then, the batches are temporarily stored in armored underground depots, protected with motion sensors, thermal cameras, and round-the-clock surveillance. From there, the explosives head to their destinations – remote mines, civil construction sites, military arsenals, or specialized warehouses – all under escort and extreme security protocols. The quantity of active explosives in the world is so staggering that you could blow up a mountain every second for over a hundred years without stopping. We're talking about an industry that doesn't build, it destroys. And with a single error, it can erase everything it touches. Finally, tell us, did you imagine this entire process? What is the most common type of explosive used in your country? Let us know your answer in the comments. And if you like this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell to not miss the next factory tour.